What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this brand new 2020 Mercedes-Benz AMG A35. Huge shout out and thank you to Mercedes-Benz of Northlake for providing this vehicle for today's video. Definitely check out the link to their website down in the description below. They have a huge selection of all the brand new Mercedes and a ton of AMG models. So this is the smallest AMG model available. Let's get into it. And the model that we're looking at today is finished off in polar white and has an MSRP at $50,000. Underneath the hood, this features a 2-liter, 4-cylinder turbocharged engine that cranks out 302 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. The engine is paired to the 7-speed speed shift automatic transmission and sends the power to all four wheels through the 4-matic all-wheel drive system. We're looking at 0-60 to 60 time in 4.6 seconds. And running off a 13.5-gallon fuel tank, you can expect 24 miles per gallon in the city and 31 out on the highway. The overall length is 179.4 inches with a wheelbase at 107.4. We get a width at 78.4 with an overall height at 55.6 inches. The AMG A35 also features drilled and ventilated disc brakes in all four corners. They measure 13.8 inches up front and they have a four piston caliper up front as well. The AMG A35 has aggressive styling all around. We get a body colored front splitter with a satin silver trim piece beneath that. There's more satin silver trim you'll find all throughout the front end, especially in the upper portion of the grill. We have two large mesh grills up front to allow maximum cooling to the radiators as well as the intercooler. You'll also notice a forward facing camera in the top portion. There's six parking sensors located up front and then you have Mercedes LED headlights. You'll see three LED projector beams with an LED daytime running light. Everything flows together very nicely to have an aggressive design. There's a lot of sharp angles and even a functional cutout to allow air to go into the bumper and pass through out around the front tires. The front bumper flows very nicely to the hood and you'll see a few sharp body lines in that just giving it a nice modern appearance. And then as we make our way to the side profile of the A35, these two-tone AMG wheels have a fantastic look to them, finished off in machine silver and gloss black. They measure 18 inches all around and really fill out the wheel wells very nicely. We have the turbo formatic badge on the front fender, as well as some chrome trim around the windows, as well as the door handles. Door handles also have some body colored white. And then moving to the mirror caps, they're finished off with body colored. They have the integrated LED turn signal, as well as a camera below that. This also has a sunroof up top with a very large piece of glass. And then as we look at the overall proportions and side profiles of the A-Class, it has a very proportional look, very stubby in appearance, makes it very sporty. And then especially being the AMG version, this has a little bit extra nice touches to it. We have a sharp body line from the headlights all the way through the vehicle into the taillights, and then another sharp body line in the lower portion of the doors. And then moving to the back end of the A35, this has a really good look all around. You can see the LED taillights with a very cool design all within them. The a35 badge up on the right side as well as Mercedes in the center and AMG on the left. We have a body colored lip spoiler mounted on the trunk and then moving down low we have six parking sensors in the rear bumper. Gloss black rear diffuser with some fins in the center giving it an aggressive design. This also has a dual chrome tipped exhaust and then underneath the Mercedes badge the backup camera will automatically pop out when in reverse. So there's a good look at the exterior and some of the performance specs with the 2020 AMG A35. Comment down below, what do you guys think of this vehicle? It's Mercedes' smallest sedan and it has a really good design, especially in the AMG version. So now we have the key fob to take a look at the interior. Finished off in this dark aluminum, that's the new AMG key fob. Going ahead and unlocking it, automatically the mirrors will fold out. We can get a really good look at the sweet interior. And then starting with the door panel, we have black Alcantara all on this armrest with some padding under it. We also get contrast red stitching. We have some aluminum accents on this grab handle that a really nice brushed aluminum piece up top with some ambient lighting. All of your seat controls are right here with your memory functions, lock and unlock, as well as the release handle, and then all of your window controls as well as the mirror controls, trunk release button, a little bit of storage, and some cup holders. Moving inside, we have an aluminum door sill written out with AMG. Has a great look to it. Then taking a look at these seats, really nice design with black leather and stitching. We have more of the Alcantara and stitching, an adjustable leg rest as well, which is a great feature. Really good looking bolsters to them, more red stitching. We even get red seat belts, which has a great design. And moving up top, we have more stitching along the headrest. And then flipping our way to the steering wheel, finished off in black leather. We have perforated leather on the sides, flat bottom design, and more red stitching. And then now inside the car, keeping my foot on the brake, we can go ahead and fire it up. You'll 
first notice the two 12 and a quarter inch LCD displays up top, giving this a modern appearance. Taking a look at the steering wheel now, we have all the cruise control settings over on the left side, as well as some buttons for this main screen. We can hit the home icon and then swipe with my finger and go through different menus within the center screen here. Very nice to see how everything I can change. I can easily go into whatever I would like. Tapping the center button, it can go into what you'd like. And then you can even scroll through the gauges, see different items by just scrolling through that. And then on the right side, we have volume, Bluetooth, and audio controls, and a very similar button now. This one will actually control the main screen in the center. So hitting the home icon again, it goes home, and then I can swipe my finger over. These are touch sensitive haptic buttons, which have a really cool look and feel to them. Going under different items, it's very easy to control everything. We have steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. They have a really nice look and feel windshield washer controls, as well as the turn signals on the left. And then we have your gear selector over on the right side. Taking a look at the left side here now, we have all of your headlight controls and e-electronic park and brake. One of the round air vents and some more of this aluminum trim to it. Very sleek on the dashboard, very simple. Then as we make our way to the center screen, we can control it using these buttons here or using this new touchpad right here. You can click over left and right, you have a home button, or it is touchscreen as well, so you can easily just go there. But we have all of your different settings that you can see up on the screen. You can go under performance, which is really cool. You can see some engine parameters. And then going back home, there's other items we can go into. We can go under the settings of the car, see driver's assistance and all the safety features, the vehicle itself, adjust your seat and everything like that. Then we have a lot of the ambient lighting. You can control this, change your color. And then if we go ahead and put the vehicle into reverse, which is all the way up, the backup camera comes up on the right side. We also have a top-down view. We can change the different views over on this right side to see the front view, a front center with top-down, the full side views, the rear, and then the standard backup camera. And then just tapping this button for park goes back into the park. We have three more air vents right in the center having this really cool design just like you'll find on all the other Mercedes lineup. More piano black trim. I really like how you have the AMG over on this right side with a cool graphic and an ambient light strip above that. We have the engine start stop and cylinder on off feature. Then down here we have some physical buttons for all the climate. We can control your actual temperature. It comes up on the screen as well. Then if you tap the menu button right there, it comes up on the screen so you can see everything changing. So as I change the temperature right here, it comes up on the screen. And of course you can do everything on the touch screen as well. Change your fan speed, the recirc, or you can change everything down here. And then below that, we have a little bit of storage here. This will pop out to help lock your phone into place for the wireless charging. We have a USB, a 12 volt on the right, and then your cup holders right here. You can open these up for different sizes. And then below that, we have more of the controls for the system. Like we saw, you can touch this button and go home, and then easily swipe your finger left and right to control everything. On the top left, we have your drive mode selector. You can toggle this down into different driving modes. We have a slippery individual comfort, and then a sport mode, and then sport plus. And then over on the right side, we have the volume on off, the navigation shortcut, radio, and telephone. A little bit of an arm pad right here to use this touch pad. We have your manual mode you can toggle on and off, as well as traction control icon. And then looking at this center armrest right here, we have more stitching in black leather. Pressing this button, it opens up in two different spots. We have a lot of storage in here and some USBs. And then taking a look at the glove box now, we have quite a lot of space in here, exactly what you would expect. I like how the overall dashboard has this kind of step here, step down from the top of the dash, just has a really unique design. Then an overall look at the interior, I love the overall use of materials, the Alcantara and leather, all the stitching and red accents. And then up top, this sunroof is practically a panoramic roof, very large piece of glass. We have all your dome lights and panoramic roof buttons up here. We can easily press this button back and it'll slide it all the way back. And then now to go ahead and take a look at the rear seat space, we can go ahead and open up the door. Door panels finished off very similarly with the black Alcantara and stitching and all the aluminum accents. We have the same design back here with the black leather, Alcantara, red stitching, and even get red seat belts on the sides. Has a really good look. I have the driver's seat set to my height, which is 5 foot 11. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rear seat space. This is the smallest car offered from Mercedes, so it's not the biggest thing out there. But actually sitting back here, I have a ton of space. I have about an inch or two in front of my knees. My feet are fitting nicely underneath the seat. Armrest is in a really good place. And I actually have about two inches of headroom up here. So very roomy. For the small sedan offer, that's actually pretty impressive. Then taking a look at the center here, we can open this up. We have more of an armrest here. And then opening these, we have two more cup holders. 
and then sitting in front of these seats we have cargo nets and two air vents. And then to go ahead and take a look at the trunk space you can use the key fob or the interior button or there is a button right beneath the Mercedes logo. Once again we have quite a lot of space for being such a smaller sedan. You can really see how everything is maximized. Just a few dealer things in here right now. Even cuts out on the left and the right side for extra space. Up top now we can pull these. That'll unlock the rear seats and we can push them flat. And then with the seats folded down flat you can see just how much more space we have now. If we go into the rear doors now, you can see the seats folded down. We even have space up here, which is really nice. But Mercedes definitely did a great job maximizing the space in the A35. All right, guys, so we are now setting off now in the AMG A35. So this is the smallest car they have, just a very nimble little car. But already, as I'm getting my bearings with it, just getting comfortable. It's pretty comfortable to get comfortable in the car. That sounds redundant. But you got good armrest. The seat is in a really good position. And I like how you have all the controls right here. The leg rest I really like as well. It just makes it nice and comfortable for my legs. But as we're going, I don't really feel the transmission shifting or anything. We're in sixth gear right now. Pretty quiet overall ride. Very stable feeling. There's not really any road noise or wind noise. Seems pretty nice and comfortable. As far as using the interior and everything, I love these buttons on the steering wheel. I really like Mercedes steering wheel. It just has a really fantastic look with all the brushed aluminum accents. As far as visibility goes, pretty easy to see over my left and right shoulder. Not really any blind spots in the car. You have a great view out. The windshield does a really good job. The mirrors are doing a pretty good job as well. So now we're going in seventh gear, just kind of cruising. Everything looks like it's laid out very nicely. I like how with the AMG, you get more of the sporty aspects. I did drive the normal A-Class, the uh, 220, and it was very normal, just a nice small sedan. But this one already feels just a little bit more nimble and tighter together being AMG. It's got all the fun stuff to it. And I believe this is the most performance oriented A-Class that we're gonna get here in the States. So the 35 is the top of the line for the A-Class. Then as I get up and go, I can feel the transmission here a little bit between gear changes. Seems really quick and automatic, but I like how it just feels lightning quick, super responsive. It doesn't feel like a basic normal automatic. It definitely has some more performance to it. So with that said, if I go ahead and put us into manual mode now, you can use the steering wheel method paddle shifters, then let's toggle down into Sport Plus. So this is the performance driving mode now. We'll get a little bit of a taste of it. <laughs> I love how right when you let off the gas, you can feel the weight of the car just like on the transmission, like it's super direct. There's no slop between the gear changes. So it really feels like the transmission stays connected to the engine, which it's hard to describe that, but that's a really good feeling. Just has that performance aspect. Going into a tighter turn. Ooh, we had some puffs on the exhaust. Wow. <laughs> you get a little bit of a pop every gear change. I like that. Ooh, downshifts, you can hear that again. Wow, I love every gear change. The car just like snaps into gear. It's so responsive feeling. That is a nice touch. And then as far as just the handling, as we go around some corners, around 50 miles an hour, the car is really planted and stable. This is a fun car to drive. I like how with the AMG touches to the A-Class, it turned a very conservative, normal, and entry-level Mercedes into something that's actually fun to drive. Like, this is fun. I'm liking how quick the transmission is shifting. Get some good engine and exhaust noises. <laughs> wow. Power delivery is insane. I don't feel any turbo lag, and I'm only giving it half throttle, keeping the revs low and everything. But I like just how <laughs> Everything just seems really, really tight with this car. I'm loving that. So if we take it out of manual and then just toggle it back up into comfort mode, the whole car just seems to soften up. The suspension feels a little bit better. It has a three-stage magnetic suspension, I believe, so it adapts to the road ahead of you. And it definitely feels a lot looser and just more soft and comfortable now that we're in comfort mode. The steering feels a lot lighter, too. So I'm liking how this car does have different characteristics that make it a good daily. A $50,000 AMG car is on the lower price point, so this is an easy car to get into if you want an AMG vehicle. And you get all the normal luxuries and are able to have this as a nice, comfortable daily. It's a Mercedes, you know, it's a nice vehicle, a nice place to be, fit and finish is really top notch. But then when you want to have fun in it, you toggle it into manual and sport mode or Sport Plus, and all of a sudden, very good throttle response, braking while under a turn. Car seems really responsive. <laughs> Man, I'm 
liking this. The brakes are really good. They definitely do a good job. And even coming into a faster sweeping turn, the weight transfer from left to right, really, really balanced. The car seems light on its toes. It feels like you can really have a lot of control over it. And this is something you could definitely take to the track if you wanted to, just for some fun. But hitting some mountain roads and a country road like we're on right now, I mean, you can feel the AMG shining through. This is actually a lot of fun to drive. And just getting up and going. Power delivery is really good, and I really like that a lot. It doesn't weigh that much, so you get quite a lot of power for being a lighter weight car. But I like it. I definitely like what Mercedes has done. I like the smaller sedans. I think they are a really good market. And as far as doing a three-point turn, because we got all-wheel drive, seems pretty tight so far. The backup camera and everything, such a good display with the top down. I, mean, I can see exactly what I need to see. Everything very easy. I love how it switches from forwards to reverse. And look at that perfect three point turn with room to spare. So you get a lot of the technology. I like how Mercedes is trickling down all the expensive technology from the big cars and they're giving it to the smaller cars as well, which is a great touch. You're not sacrificing getting into an entry level Mercedes anymore. So I like how with this car, you definitely get a lot. Very, very peppy. That is, I was not expecting that at all. So finishing up now on this last little fun part of the road. Overall thoughts, I think the A35 is a really good step as far as an entry level AMG vehicle, but you're not sacrificing just because it is the lower end of the spectrum on price. You're getting a really fun to drive, very adequately powered. Like this is a quick car and I'm only half throttling it and you get a ride at just 60 without even thinking. So it is plenty powerful. You get all the refinements of a Mercedes Benz and it is definitely something that has a lot to offer. I'm loving how 60 mile an hour round turns, very stable, no body roll at all. That is impressive. The suspension definitely is a big plus. They did a really good job with this car, but I'm definitely enjoying the car. <laughs> all wheel drive really keeps the car planted and pulls it around the turns. So yeah, you get a lot for your money with the AMG A35. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Once again, huge shout out and thank you to Mercedes-Benz Northlake for providing this car for today's video. Definitely check out the link to their website down in the description below. They have a huge selection of all the brand new Mercedes as well as all the AMG cars as well. So definitely check them out. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Give it a huge thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next video.